Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lead Today community. Uh, we are in kind of a mini series discussing faith. Um, we, at our, at our last time, last week together, um, I referred to a text in Christian scripture in the New Testament where it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. What an odd statement. What an odd statement. And I reflected on that, and you might remember, is that not only is our life a gift from God, but what we do with it is our gift back to him. Well, faith and life, boy, they are, they are pretty darn close to brother and sister, don't you think? So I also believe that that faith, I'm not even talking about religious faith, that faith as an element of our being has been uh, imputed into each of us and therefore is a gift from God. And so we could carry the same reasoning out that if faith is a gift from God, then what we do with it is our gift back to God. Uh, if you're a parent and you've seen certain skills that your uh, children have and you see them waste those things, uh, it can make you sad, it can make you frustrated. And if we are image bearers of God, if, if we are made in the image and likeness of God, and then we can see too rationally that from a relational perspective, it can kind of grieve our creator when we don't grow to our potential. And so anyway, we are talking about faith, and we can talk about it uh, religiously, but we can also talk about it extremely practically. Uh, uh, Phil Eastman um, said, uh, Phil Eastman, uh, uh, a friend of mine, said that people don't do what they know. People don't do what they know. They do what they believe. They do what they believe. People don't, people don't do what they know. They do what they believe. And I've been, you know, thinking about that and processing that for years now. And I wanted to give you a couple illustrations of why I believe what Phil said is, is true um, about your performance, about your business, uh, about your, your team, and e even, about, even about your faith uh, in God and how you exercise that. Um, have you ever noticed if, if you follow sports or, or any kind of organization, there are those that just seem to lose. <laughs> There's organizations that lose. They, they can't, they have a systemic disease of, of, of losing. You can't deny it. If you do enough looking around and follow enough, there are teams that are just really good at losing. <laughs> and, 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 you know, some of my favorite teams come to mind. And, and so I, I'm laughing as a way to uh, hide, my, hide my pain. And what I believe about that, what I believe about that is, though they understand the game, as many of their competing teams understand the game, uh, though they know that if they execute in a certain way that, that they should win, they, they somehow don't believe that they can win. And, and that impedes on their performance. It, it impedes on the attention to detail. What you believe, it, you know, uh, so, sometimes I, I see people do all of the right things but they give off something, it's hard to explain, something between the ears. They, they, they know something intellectually, but they don't believe it. And, and so therefore it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Um, it doesn't happen. Let me give you another uh, example. Um, how many times is a quarterback not see one of his receivers that's that's wide open no no you know no no one's around them just wide open it happens a lot 
It happens a lot. Is it because they didn't look in that direction? Yeah, that, that does happen, but not all the time. Often what happens, there's a thing called a favorite receiver, a favorite receiver. And, and they, they tend to throw predominantly to that, that receiver in football. Um, why do they do that? Because they believe that that particular receiver is going to catch the ball. And even though this other one's wide open, there, 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 there's some doubt. There, there's some doubt that, that he's going to catch the ball. So he chooses to go. And he'll even force it sometimes uh, to his favorite receiver. If you don't listen to, to sports or whatever, you know, you can just tune into that. But let me give you a non-sports analogy. Um, those of you that are in sales, you've heard it time and time again that sales is a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And though that may not be 100% true, it's very true. So I don't know if it's 60% true, 51% true, 80% true, but, but we all know that it's true. The more times you try... Sooner or later, someone's going to say yes just to give you mercy. <laughs> and if you stop, then you never receive that mercy. Also, the more you do something, the better you get at doing that thing. And then what happens is you grow in something. What do you grow in? You grow in your belief. You grow in your faith. And you begin to realize that the, the more times I ask, the uh, more times I'm going to get the response. But often people say to themselves, I'm going to make 50 calls tomorrow. I'm going to make 50 calls, you know, uh, this week. And, and their first 10 is no. And what it does is it, it, it kind of deflates what, what they believe. They, they know what they've heard by the coach, by the consultant. But their personal experience has a way of taking faith out of them. Faith out of them. Faith out of them. You know, for example... When, when I was a young man, I used to like to lift weights. And I lift weights today, but it's mostly to, you know, uh, help in the, strengthen me in the aging process. When I was young, I'm not sure why. I guess sports and wanted to stay strong. And, 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 uh, but you know what I've noticed is I respect weights enough that when I haven't been underneath a bench press, um, I'm not going to put two 45-pound um, plates on, on each side and then try to lift that barbell up and certainly without a spotter frankly i wouldn't try to do that you know do that with with the spotter um why because it has been probably uh 20 years since i've done that so i you know i i don't believe that i could press that much weight and so i don't so i don't um, i was at the gym this morning and i was doing some bench pressing but i put it on the weight that i believed that i could do and not only was i able to do it I was able to do it and then even increase sales call. You know, in, in your Christian faith, if you find that you're losing faith, I, I'm, I'm going to make you a bet right now. I'm going to bet because you've stopped practicing it. You've stopped practicing. You, you've stopped pursuing it. Um, you, you have stopped. Let me give you an example. Um, the Proverbs is, uh, it says that a gentle answer turns away wrath. A gentle answer turns away wrath. And in the book of Proverbs, we, we call these general truths. They're not true 100% of the time because sometimes you run into a jerk who's just a jerk and, and no matter what you do, they're, they're going to be a jerk. Uh, but often, often, most of the time, maybe nine out of 10 times, maybe 99 out of 100 times, when someone is belligerent and you respond in gentleness, it has a way of reducing that... And, and as you do that, you start to go, huh, things in the Bible are, are true. And you begin to grow in your faith in those things. You begin to grow in your faith in those things. Um, pretty exciting. Uh, faith is a muscle. And you have got to exercise it. You've got to, to take some coaching um, when you hear it, about doing certain things right, then exercise those things and watch what happens. 